Now, speaking of that, we have to talk about how popular you are with the ladies, and you have a big following on social media. How often are women sliding into your DMs? And can you give us some tea on what they're saying on you, and maybe you want to drop some hints on who they are? Most of the DMs uh, slide slash, what's that surfboard emoji? The, uh, um, the, uh, most of that is is... Women will be like, you know, hey, are you free for dinner? Are mm -hmm. you free for coffee? Or can I take you out for lunch or something? You know, that's, I mean, that's, that's flattering. That's, that's not. Um, the wild stuff, occasionally, you know. Pictures. It'll be a picture or uh, like a an like areola, a you know, okay. or two. How about um, a coochie? You get any coochie pictures? Occasionally. Sometimes, uh, once in a while, like, they'll go, like, like one or two a month, a couple of them a month, you know, areola, areola. Yawn. <laughs> Yawn. Yawn. <laughs> labia majora, labia minora. Oh, okay. To <laughs> vibrating toys and clips and stuff that they're doing and this, that, and the other and calling my name like, wait a damn minute. What? How does that make you, is it flattering or does it gross you out? It, it's, it's, it doesn't gross me out, but it's also like I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, we got to, you know, I got to take you to dinner. Where have you been all my life? You're my yeah, wife. exactly. I just saw you do what you did with that thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I can't compete with that. <laughs> anyway, but it's, it's, it's interesting. It, 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 it never gets old. Like, it's funny to me sometimes, yeah. but it's all, it doesn't go to my head. It's just like, you, you know. you show your friends? What? No. No. I do. I show my friends. Mm -mm. Like, look at this dick pic I got. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, we show our friends, okay? And like, which is why I've never sent one of those. Right. In life. No. Like, no, no, I believe you. On my son. You're, like, a pretty I've classy, never... you're a pretty classy guy, I gotta say. I've never really heard any sotting about you. Yeah, you gotta have a good memory, because I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm on TV Tuesday. I can't send you a picture of my junk. <laughs> and that wouldn't be in good taste. It really wouldn't. Yeah. And then you never really know what your future's gonna be. Like, you don't know if you might be up for some Disney show one day. Exactly. And then you go do a little search for Christian Keys. Yeah. It's like, Christian Keys junk. Yeah, junk pic. Hashtag junk pic. You don't, <laughs> and that'll write you right on out of whatever Disney thing. So thank you, Disney. Um, you can go ahead and hire me now because I have I have no junk pics out there. So you're there dick on pic free. Yes. Okay, good. No Congratulations, I guess. Yeah. Well, I don't because I've always thought ahead. Like, okay, well, man, I'm I'm on TV this week. Right. I, I can't. I, I'd love to. I wanted to, like uh uh Terrence Howard in, in the Best Man Holiday. Yes, yes. When he was like, well, hold on, let me get the long way. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, but. Big picture, I can't. No, good I can't. For you. Yeah. You keep your value high like that though too. You got a I mean I got a whole kid. You, you know, do. I got and he's on Instagram. Yeah. So it's like I can't that would spin around and he'd be like, Really dad? He would right. be I would disappoint him. Yeah. So I can't I, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm I'm gonna make mistakes, but I won't disappoint him on that level. Okay. So who else is sliding in your DMs? <laughs> Um, usually, fans. just your 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 ev everyday hardworking, amazing woman. Just kind of they'll be in there shooting shots. They'll be like, "Hey, so listen." Um, Do you expect us to believe no celebrities are in your DMs? You'll occasionally get some, but it's like I don't I don't present myself as as thirsty or you know, hey, DM me. Hey, I'm gonna respond to that. But you hey. don't have to. Like you're a good looking guy, so I, I see nothing wrong with a woman like sliding and saying, "Hey, like what's good." Well, most times the celebrities that that might DM me are are like people who I know mm -hmm. that I've that I've filmed with. Yeah. So it's like it's you know if I'm working with you on a show or something, we're we're not gonna date. I'm yeah. not. I, so you don't date where you work. Yeah, it's awkward. I did it before a long, long time ago. You can't hump nobody you're working with. You can't hump anybody you're working with. Yeah. Just on camera. <laughs> Just on camera. Yeah, that's acting. <laughs> Just on camera. You can only hump them on camera when they yeah the action. Then you can hump away. But a so, cut. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sure you gotta you... hold it when they say the cut. They always. Say, I love that. That's my favorite part. Now I'm sure guys in your DMs as well because you're yeah and it's and it's I can handle that. Did you do something on that on social media? I did and I got I caught hell and high water. But I don't think you should have. I shouldn't have. I feel like okay and just to give the backstory, can you explain what happened? So you you address men being inappropriate to you in DMs, being and, overly sexual, right? And and, and, and it, it wasn't like it wasn't a I'm I have multiple friends. Um, one of my castmates on one of the shows that I'm shooting now is gay. I don't care. We, we, we'll go to the club, watch the game, go to the strip club, whatever. That's my people. Mm -hmm. um, but I should be able to, this isn't after, I don't know, six, seven years of comments. Yeah. And penis pictures. Right. And daddy, that deep print. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, come get some of this boy, P-U-S-S-Y. So disrespectful. I would never. Uh-uh. And it gets worse. Well, the reason I sent it was because some guy said, you so sexy. I want to have a threesome with you and your son. Oh, wow. I'm a whole man okay. first. So now that. And I'm from Flint. Right. So what you're not going to do is include my son, my child. Wow, that's so... In some bullshit. That's so tacky, though. So, yeah, I had to say something. And I was still classy about it. I didn't, I didn't use no... I didn't do, use no disrespectful rhetoric. Exactly. I want you want to fight now. I feel you. I, you want to fight right so now. To include you, okay. First of all, I know you, and you are a classy guy. And the fact that you don't have any of these thotty pictures out there, and there's really nothing out there about you. There yeah. really isn't. Like you, pretty much, it's your work, and that's it. Yeah. So the fact that someone felt comfortable, and then bringing your son into it, to was say just, something that trifling. That's what pushed me over the edge. And all the video said was this. It said, "Listen, I, I salute you if you live, you live your truth. I respect you for being that courageous. I'm living mine." If I can respect yours and not disrespect yours, if I can take my son down so we, and we march for women's rights, mm -hmm. so women don't have to deal with sexual harassment, right. women don't have to deal with dick pics and, mm -hmm. and inappropriate gestures and, and guys bumping up against them in, in the break room, well, let me just slide through and just set this thing on your back. So they don't have to deal with all of that bullshit because y'all right. sh shouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah. That's not okay. And I go march with my son, but if I put out a video with no homophobic slurs, no disrespect, no profanity, just saying, fellas, if I can respect your truth, please respect mine. No more overly sexual comments, no more vulgar comments, no penis pictures in the DM. Is that too much to ask? That's exactly what the video said verbatim, and I caught hell from a few people, but most of the LGBT community that hit me up was like, yo, you were right on point. Here's the thing, I feel like um, this a few segments of our population that we're just not allowed to say anything about even when they're wrong. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it, and sometimes the LGBT community gets a little carried away. I understand they were, they were very, very, very much uh, disrespected as a community, right. so th there's a, a, a need to overcompensate sometimes, but I don't think, I still think you still have to be respectful to people. And just because you live your truth doesn't mean you have to put that on everybody. Right. I don't think that's right, and I don't think, and I feel like that's wrong that they accuse you of being homophobic, and why, we have to put these disclaimers out. Yeah. I have friends, I'm in, yeah. I, and these are my people. Why do we have to say all that? Why can't we simply say, don't come at me like that. Yeah. Just like I don't want a man to be up in my DMs, you know, being all flagrant with me, or a woman. Yeah. Really, we shouldn't, that shouldn't, we shouldn't have to deal with that from anyone if it's not invited or asked for. Exactly. Right? And I you should be able to respectfully enunciate that. You should be able to say that respectfully and it not be a big deal. Unfortunately, it was. And it's it, like, I'm not going to apologize or be shamed into the corner shouldn't. for doing the same thing that I marched with my son so women can have the right for. And if you truly want equal rights and not superior rights, you're going to have to understand yeah. that. You have to understand that, right? Like, that's not like, you don't get a special pass yeah, because you're gay. Because you're gay, you don't get to be extra disrespectful. No. You don't get to call me a bitch. Like, my homegirls don't get to call me a bitch. I don't play that either. And I feel like we have we've lost kind of sense of like class sometimes and just be like no you don't get a pass that and I, I didn't know that they did that to your son yeah. I, I'm I'm mad now yeah. and your I, son's was a a I was it, it had somebody done that and I can't finish the sentence on air but had somebody done this in in person and said that vile thing I want to have a threesome with you and your son some one one somebody got to come bail me out yeah and your son was a minor yeah so that's why I put the video out like you talking about my 14 15 year old son you nasty mother right like who does that? Motherfucker, nasty motherfucker. We can who, say it. Who, yeah. I'll say, let me be your dirty voice. Hey, okay. I'm a, you know what? I'm going to start it over and I'm going to point at you. Right. You just said, right, you right, nasty say motherfucker. Yes, thank you. Nasty motherfucker. Like who, who brings kids into it? Mm. That was the main reason I put that thing out because I'm Papa Bear and that's like, that's my cub. I grew up without my father. So yeah. if I do anything, I'm going to try not to disappoint, disappoint God, disappoint my boy, and I'm going to protect my son. And you're not going you're not going to attach any of your even if that's your truth and it's wild as hell, that's your business. Don't bring my child that into it. That shouldn't be anyone's truth to have a threesome with a that dad part, and their minor son. That's not a truth. That's a fetish. It's and that's disgusting. Actually, yeah, and illegal. But and, and illegal. It's actually a crime. That's why I. That's the re the real reason I made the video because I was done. I was like, this this shit's too much. I'm done. Yeah. No more. Isn't it tough being so fine? <laughs> Look at you, <laughs> poor baby. I just work here. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Christian. I am. I got a cool job. I am Christian from Michigan. I used to drive a truck, and now I'm acting. I love the humility, though. Yeah. Keep, keep that thing going, because that's going to work for you a long time. Thank you. It really is. Now, you are definitely, like, you, you can see how passionate you are about your son. And anyone that follows you on social media sees, like, how good of a dad you are. You call your son the sequel. Talk about being a single dad and, and, and why it was so important for you to, like, put your son, 
You're, you definitely it seems like you put it seems like you put your son first, and a lot of yeah. people put career first, and they'll get they'll get around to that later. They'll make mm -hmm. up for lost time later. And you seem like in the middle of you becoming very hot, you really were really hands on with your son. Yeah, I I missed episode. I booked like a really cool three episode arc, and it could have been more with a really dope director. Great money, like. This is early in the career, but probably maybe for the three episodes, more than 70K. Damn. And this is probably like 10, 10 years ago, so that would have landed real that's, nice. And that's when you was chasing 350. That, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that check sound, that sound like music when it land on your table. Yeah, yeah. A check like that. But my son was here with me for the summer. Like, he, he'll pop down every few weeks, and I'll go down to San Antonio every few weeks. Um, so it's, a lot of time doesn't pass between when I see him and then any break that he has, he's with me. Um, we were alternating school years for a while, and then when he got to high school and had, you know, he got a circle of best friends and got his little girlfriend down there, I couldn't snatch him out of that school and stick him over here in L.A. somewhere. So, How long was the show? Uh, it, was, it was over the summer, but I couldn't look my son in the face and be like, yeah, I got to send you back home to your mom, and I got to go. $70,000. I, could, I couldn't. I could Listen, you know how many Saturdays I sat out on the porch waiting for my real father or my adopted father that was going to come take us fishing? Yeah. And every time a car hit the bent corner down there, you kind of parked up because yeah. it might be, it might be, and it got closer, and he was like, no, nah, that's not. And then seven or eight hours later, you don't even want to go to the bathroom in case he, right. he drive past accidentally mm -hmm. and not see you. But you, Isn't that the worst feeling waiting on the curb for a dad that's not going to show That's never going to show, yeah. And, and, and fathers that are out there watching, like, that is so damaging to your kids yeah. because it affects us later on in life. It, yeah. As adults, and a lot of times we have our issues with our relationships, our friendships, you can kind of trace it back to that moment, like yeah. those moments. Yeah, and that, I, I never want to be that, so I don't promise them anything thing that I don't know in my bone marrow that I can deliver. And I always tell him, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to promise. Let me check on that. But if I promise him something, you know, if I call him on speakerphone, he'll, I'll be like, hey, book, if I promise you anything, I can stop talking. He'll say, you come through. Good for you. That's, and he just turned 17. I want more, but thank you. God, I'm almost up. Thank you, Jesus. Good for you. Hey. Christian, we have a comment from a caller on the line. Okay. Aaliyah, is that your name? Malia. Malia. Malia, Malia yeah. what's your comment for Mr. Christian Keys? Hi, I just wanted to say uh, my twin sister and I were sitting here watching the show, and we've been we've been basically following your career for a while, and we just wanted to thank you for always being such a positive influence. Like you always have positive vibes, and even in this interview, you've had, you've conducted yourself in a positive manner. So I just want to say thank you for being a positive influence to the community. I appreciate it, Malia. Thank you. No problem. Have a good one. Thank you. And to your twin, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's like, you better give me, you better give me. <laughs> so, Christian, you're from Flint, Michigan, mm -hmm. right? And you you grew up in Detroit or yeah. opposite way around? Do I have it? Bo no, you uh, born in Detroit, uh, across the street from Motown, actually, um, Henry okay. Ford Hospital. I grew up in Flint. Most of the foster homes I grew up in were in Flint. So you're, you're a foster child, right? Mm -hmm. I was in like 12 or 15 foster homes, three group homes, a few detention centers. I was adopted twice. Um, it was crazy. Um, wow. It was, it was, uh, the first adoption was horrendous. So I did like four, three or four foster homes between three and a half, age three and a half and six. I got adopted when I was six from Mrs. Keys. Stayed with her until I was 12. Age eight to 12 was vicious child abuse. Mm -hmm. Bat, hammer, cutting board, axe handle, like the flat side of the hatchet, not the sharp side. Um, the belt buckle, scalding hot showers, freezing cold showers. Stand outside naked in the snow. I remember you in told me January that. At, at nine years old. That's a punishment. I deserve some spankings. I deserve a little tap on the on the butt. Now I wasn't I wasn't nobody saint. I, I was a young boy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do stuff. I'm gonna jump off the roof with like a shopping bag and see if it catch me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm gonna do dumb shit. But I didn't sure deserve what she what what she was doing. Have you ever addressed her about this? Like yeah. as an adult, maybe. I tried to I tried to find her. And I found out she passed about a year after, and I had already forgiven her. Like I had to, I had at some point in my life, I literally laid down in my rug and just put my face in the carpet and cried like a three-year-old, because I needed to set all that shit down. Like I, I can't go where I'm supposed to go if I'm carrying resentment from her, resentment from my birth mother for giving me up for adoption, resentment for all the bad foster parents, resent for, resentment from all the the bullies in middle school and high school and all that. I had to let that go so I can go where I'm supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to carry it because it's heavy. Yeah. And I had, I had forgiven already before I found out that she had passed. Wow. So. And you're, you're totally at peace with it? Is yeah, it? and I, I've, ta I've talked to my son about it. I'm like, listen, I, these are the beatings I got. 
So, you know, if I ever bent you over my knee and be like, stop running across the parking lot so a car doesn't hit you and you don't die. Mm -hmm. Then, You're giving purpose to the yes, discipline. Yes, exactly. Under, and then come sit down and talk with me afterwards. You know, you'll never experience what I experienced. Mm -hmm. I'll never stomp you and stand on your chest. She was, a, she was five feet one, 179 pounds. And if you fell during a spanking, she would stomp you. Uh,